Hello, welcome everyone to today's webinar. We are here at Koch University. My name is Melissa Abache. I work in the international admissions teams of Koch University, and we're very happy to um, see all of you starting to join our webinar today. Today, we're gonna to talk about our LLM, Masters of Law program in, in, in public law and in private law. And we're very happy about this because it's one of our flagship programs where we welcome um, very talented Turkish and international students every year. So it is a great opportunity for all of you joining today to learn more about the program from you know, the right people. So the right people with me today are Professor Bertil Emra Oder, who is the Dean of the School of Law, and uh, Ms. Ezra Jan, who also coordinates the programs. We also have colleagues from the Graduate School of uh, Social Sciences and Humanities, who will be able to answer specific admissions questions. So before we start, I just want to go over some ground rules to make sure that this is a, a good experience for everyone. Please know that uh, you are all, as participants, you are all automatically muted, so you won't be able to ask questions verbally. We're going to kindly ask you to type your questions, um, and for that you can use the chat box feature that you see on the bottom of, or the top of your screens. Um, those questions, we're going to be answering them at the end of the presentation. If something comes to mind as we're doing the presentation, you can type it, but we might, actually, we might actually give an answer to that during the presentation, okay? So some patience is um, asked of you. We're not going to be using the raise hand feature, okay? Because we're not going to unmute you. So just so that you know, the webinar is being recorded and we will be uploading the video of the webinar to our YouTube channel um, by tomorrow morning. So you will get an automatic email so that you can watch the recording at your own leisure later on. We are scheduled to last for about one hour, including your questions and answers. So it's very important that you listen carefully to the presentation and all the information that it's going to be presented about the courses, the faculty, the application procedures, everything that you would like to know, I think we're gonna to cover today, but of course we know you will have questions as well that we are keen to, to answer. Um, the other thing I want to mention is we have a small poll because we want to make sure that all of you who uh, register for today have some time to join. So I'm going to join, I'm going to launch that poll now. You should be able to see it. We have just some uh, short questions to know a little bit about you who are joining us today. If you can kindly vote on that poll that you see on your screens, then it will help us also to tailor a little bit the content of today's webinar based on who we see is in the audience today. So I'm going to give 10, 15 more seconds for you to please vote. In the meantime, I'm going to check who is joining us. That's great. Perfect. We know it's, it's the end of the week, also in the afternoon. Um, so thank you so much for joining. Um, we know many of you might be also uh, working from home if you're working or if you're taking classes in university, this might be a long day. So thank you for joining. Okay, so we are now at a minute. I'm going to end the poll and share the results. Okay, so uh, let's see. I think you can all see that. Okay, so we have a fairly even split between participants from Turkey and from abroad. So that's great to, to hear. And a similar kind of even split between interest in our private law LLM and our public law LLM. There's a couple of you interested in something else. So we hope that you're in the right place <laughs> um, today, but please feel free to ask your questions. And um, most of you, like over 50%, recently graduated from university in the past three years. So you're recent graduates, that's, that's great to know. Um, but also some of you are you know, in your last year of university or graduated a while ago. Okay, so I'm gonna close the poll now. Next. I'm, I'm asking my colleague Esra to help me with the, the slides. 
Okay, so I'm very um, excited to introduce you today to Professor Bertil Embra Oder, as I said, the Dean of our School of Medicine, one of our, you know, star academicians here at Coach University, a wonderful person to work with. And we're very honored to have her today because she is incredibly busy <laughs> with everything that she does as a Dean and in her teaching and her research. So I want to um, invite Professor Bertil to unmute her microphone and give us an introduction and her welcome to today's webinar. Yes. Hello, everybody. It's just a great pleasure uh, for me to extend my warmest welcome to all of you. I am the Dean of uh, the Koch University Law School, as Melissa stated, and I am also the Professor of Constitutional Law with a focus on human rights law and comparative constitutional review. I also serve as the UNESCO Chair on Gender Equality and Sustainable uh, Development. We are hosting this uh, meeting with my colleagues, uh, Ms. Melissa Bache and uh, the chief of our global admission team and our academic uh, coordinator and executive director of UNESCO chair, Ms. Esra Azjan. And I assume that uh, our administrative staff from our graduate uh, school of social science and uh, humanities uh, joins us uh, today, uh, namely Tuche Hanım. And uh, we are very pleased to meet you on this online platform and to witness your interest in our uh, Master of Laws program. Uh, we have established our program approximately eight years ago to meet the challenges uh, in legal studies and legal uh, profession as to the internationalization and the plurality of the jurisdictions. Our aim is uh, to offer a truly international uh, legal education uh, having a very strong focus on regional, international, and comparative studies uh, of law. And in line uh, with our vision and institutional uh, values, the ethically responsible, critically minded, and transformative legal education and training plays the key role in our uh, program. Therefore, the ethical principles of uh, law and uh, the critical studies of uh, law complement our regional, uh, international, and comparative content as an indispensable element. We have a very dynamic uh, curriculum considering the socioeconomic developments, including both uh, the progressive and regressive impact of law and convergence and uh, divergence trends in all fields of law at regional and global level, and particularly cross-border legal issues besides the conventional uh, topics of domestic jurisdictions. The curriculum offers both uh, full English and Turkish uh, courses, and while uh, the international students take a fully English taught program, domestic students may take the Turkish law courses besides their English taught uh, program in the field of law corporations and public economic uh, law. We support our master's students uh, with a variety of support uh, programs with our different uh, units, such as uh, our academic uh, writing center that provides guidance both for thesis and non-thesis students. We have also the career uh, center that supports our uh, LLM students and the global office and exchange uh, office uh, both uh, provide different uh, programs for the LLM students. In general, uh, the hard walls of legal constructs and the legal trends, the legal predictions and emerging issues as well as the pre-articulated case scenarios play a significant role in our program. Since Koch University is a top-ranking uh, research institution at the global uh, scale, according to the reputable indexes and has a very high ranking in terms of strong institutions, peace and justice as one of the indicators of the sustainable development goals. We put emphasis uh, on sharing uh, the best of the recent uh, research outputs of our own scholars and the best practices in the field of legal uh, profession. Uh, additionally, uh, we organize extracurricular activities each year that integrates the Master of Laws uh, to our research uh, projects that are mostly externally uh, funded. I mean the research projects supported by Turkish National Science Foundation, uh, the European Research uh, Council uh, projects or different types of EU funded uh, projects, uh, including, uh, of course, Neftan 
uh, fund uh, and various international and foreign uh, schemes. We welcome uh, a variety of international scholars and practitioners uh, from different uh, jurisdictions in our program as guest lecturers, and we have also international uh, scholars who deliver specific uh, lectures, particularly devoted to transnational issues of law. Our centers and the UNESCO uh, Chair on Sustainable Development and Gender Equality serve also a hub of research and uh, training for our Master of Law students with their seminars, workshops, and hands-on uh, teaching activities, including the civic engagement activities. Uh, and we also organize uh, study visits to the headquarters of regional and international organizations, particularly under the umbrella of UNESCO chair, uh, including the headquarters uh, of UN offices in Turkey and particularly in Istanbul. We also organize different types of study uh, visits to Supreme uh, Judiciary, international firms and research institutes. Last year, we have visited, for example, the UK uh, Supreme Court and had the opportunity uh, to organize a special uh, session one with one of the reputable uh, judges, namely Sir Lloyd Jones, to discuss the constitutionalization of uh, UK judiciary and the challenges of judicial review. Uh, we have unfortunately postponed this year's study visit to the UK and Spain due to COVID-19 uh, pandemic, but we would like to organize it uh, for the next year. On the basis of our spatial uh, agreement uh, between University of London Institute of Advanced uh, Legal Studies, uh, we offer a spatial training for students uh, in London and in Istanbul for academic writing and uh, legal uh, publishing. Our students uh, that come from a variety of uh, different jurisdictions and different backgrounds. Uh, we have the opportunity to discuss particularly comparative law uh, issues with the inclusion, with active participation of our uh, students. We have students from the United States, Germany, South Africa, Pakistan, Italy, uh, Ukraine, uh, Moldova. Uh, and they also uh, uh, serve as practicing uh, lawyers located uh, in Istanbul. However, they also pursue an international uh, career uh, in, the, in the offices of the United uh, Nations as bureaucrats, as legal consultants, and they also serve uh, in the Council of uh, Europe offices. Now I stop here and I pass the floor again to Melissa so that she can give uh, a brief information about uh, Koch University, and then uh, Esra uh, will be providing information, a detailed information as regards our LLM uh, programs. And please do not hesitate to raise questions uh, via chat uh, application or send uh, them us uh, through uh, emails. It will be a great pleasure to answer your questions. Uh, Melissa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Bertil, for that introduction and overview of the different areas of emphasis and strengths of our LLM programs and our School of Law. It is, I mean, I, I always like to uh, say this to everyone who can hear where it's one of our most internationally minded and um, the, the outlook of the School of Law and of course of our LLM programs is very international in terms of its connections and the opportunities that it provides to students. So thank you for giving that overview of opportunities. Um, so uh, Esther, if you can move to the next slide, please. Great, thank you. So I'll just give you a very brief overview, especially for those of you who are joining us from outside of Turkey. We know we have many participants today from India. So hello to everyone. Hope you're all well there. So. Um, this is a picture of our campus, which I like because it shows first that it is a beautiful campus and you can find a lot of uh, videos. There is an aerial tour of the university that you can also find in our YouTube channel. So as a space of learning, it is a very uh, pleasant, safe, uh, comfortable place to, to conduct your studies, your graduate studies, where you have all the facilities that you need in terms of central library, sports center, uh, meeting rooms, everything you need. It's, basically in our campus. And we are located, if we can go to the next slide, please. We are located, of course, in Istanbul, in Turkey, um, on the European side of the city in the Northwest, in a district called Sarier. Um, and our campus, from our campus, you can see the Black Sea, which is one of the two seas that 
um, surrounds the city. For those of you, again, unfamiliar with Turkey, uh, the, you will have heard something about, you know, the bridge between East and West. But with regards to legal studies, and I think for graduate studies, it is absolutely true. It is a very strategic place to conduct your graduate studies uh, in the sense that you're getting exposure and very easy access to, you know, the communities and of practice and research in Europe, as well as the emerging communities in Asia who are working on different topics. As a city, it's a very cosmopolitan city where you can find international students from nearly every country. Uh, we will explain some of the opportunities that are available for international students a bit later on. So um, that's, that's what I can tell you for now. I don't want to go into too much detail about this. So if we can go to the next slide. Here, I can just show you some other kind of views of our campus. Next. And again, I, I prefer to invite you to check our YouTube channel because you can see them kind of in a more, uh, in a lively, livelier way. So Coach University was set up 26 years ago. We are a young university. And within the context of Turkey, we're also a small university. So we have a, a total student body of 7,000 students approximately with 513 full-time faculty across our seven colleges. And uh, those faculty members are also part of our graduate schools, including the Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities, which is where our um, LLM programs and PhD in law programs are located, let's say. So when we were set up 26 years ago, the goal or the mission of the university was to become a center of excellence in Turkey that would provide world-class education and create that would create also new knowledge for the benefit of society. We can comfortably say that we have now um, achieved that mission in the sense of becoming a center of excellence in Turkey and also in the region. Um, and through the faculty members that we have and the design of our programs, we are most definitely providing world-class education comparable to the best centers in Europe and in the US. Research is the other key word that I want you to remember about Coach University. So we are a research intensive university and we put a lot of effort and investment in terms of, as I said, the, the faculty that we hire and the resources that we provide to them and the academic freedom to conduct that research um, both inside of Turkey and outside of Turkey through their global network. So that's another thing that we always like to emphasize because it makes us very proud and quite different, again, within the context of, of Turkey. We will talk more about our international connections in a few slides, specifically about the opportunities for our LLM students to do, for example, semesters abroad at some of our partner universities, the alumni network that they will be joining and the connections that that can bring in terms of job opportunities and the specific um, scholarship opportunities available as well. So next. Last but not least, this is my last um, slide here. As Professor um, Bertil was mentioning, we know that for um, you know the, the process to make a decision of which graduate school to attend, which LLM program to choose can be daunting because there's a lot of offer in lots of different countries of very good quality. There's more established centers, others less so. And some students like to use rankings as a way of being able to compare quality of different programs or different universities. You can see here some of our rankings, um, you know, in uh, um, reputable ranking systems such as Times Higher Education, um, QS, Financial Times, more applied to our uh, Graduate School of Business. What I want to emphasize here is that when it comes, for example, to social sciences in general, our university is um, performing very well, again, because of the strength of the research conducted by our faculty members and that international outlook that they put into their, into their research. So with this, I'm going to close now. I hope this gives you a glimpse of the university and that it makes you curious to then check out our website and see all of the programs that we offer to see our professors. And I'm going to now kindly ask uh, Ms. Esra yes, uh, to Hi. unmute herself. And now she will give us an in-depth view of the LLM programs at our university. Thank you, Melissa, and thank you, Professor Odar, for your insightful introduction of our LLM programs and Coach University. Um, thank you for all joining us today, and it's always a pleasure to meet you, even virtually. Uh, I would like to give you a brief information about 
our LLM programs and admission process, and then we will pass uh, the floor to a Q&A session and we can answer your questions. Uh, why you should choose to study LLM program at Koch University? Because uh, we are very proud of our faculty members that are internationally renowned and dedicated to train a new generation of lawyers. And also we have, as Professor Oda mentioned, we have visiting professors from different, different jurisdictions and also practitioners teaching at our LLM programs every year. Uh, we are offering a wide range of curriculum that includes most demanding and less discussed comparative international topics of law. And we are offering international environment, as Melissa mentioned, with a qualified group of graduate students and undergraduate students. And also we have staff and uh, professors from different countries. Um, we are uh, collaborating, we have uh, strong ties and collaborations with international leading legal institutions such as European Society of International Law or Law Schools Global League. We used to be the president of Law Schools Global League, Professor Odar served uh, six years around to, as a president of Law Schools Global League, which helps us to organize research uh, forums global conferences and providing exchange opportunities for our students. Uh, let's get into our programs, what we offer at Coach University. We offer two tracks of LLM programs, one in private law and one in public law. As you can see, the duration differs. Uh, thesis programs, both in public law and private law, takes two years. Students are required to take seven courses and they, they write their thesis in their second year. And non-thesis programs take one year, which is 10 courses and a final research paper, which is a kind of a short dissertation. These are what our curriculum looks like. And these are the classes public public law LLM students are required to take compared to constitutional law, transnational European criminal and criminal law and procedures, European human rights law, public uh, private partnerships. These are required courses for, for public law class uh, program. And these four courses are required in our private law, world trade organization, international and European contract law, dispute resolution mechanisms and global competition law. Uh, as you can see here, this is our list of com common elective classes that both programs, students from these, these two programs can take. And also, they also, if you're a student in private law and if you're interested in one of the public law classes, you are free to choose one or two of these classes as your elective. And the other way around, if you're a public law student, you are definitely take private law courses and also elective classes. Um, let me give you some features of our LLM programs. Uh, we are offering a modular basis courses and which, which are scheduled on Fridays and Saturdays. And then of course our program is in English, but we also offer some Turkish and bilingual classes for our Turkish students. What is modular basis? So when we have classes only on Fridays and Saturdays, uh, four hours each, those classes last six to eight weeks. But it doesn't mean that you finish that course in eight weeks. You, of course, have your research papers throughout the semester. But the online lectures or physical lectures in campus also last six to eight weekends, basically. That enables most of our students, they work, they do internships during their weekdays. So, of course, if you're, not, if you're interested in a specific research area, we also allow our LLM students to enroll in elective classes offered under the Graduate School of Social Sciences in different master's program. Of course, it is subject to professor's consent, but some of our students are uh, interested in different subjects and they take elective classes. Let's say you are not interested, you want to have a specific in-depth research in an area of uh, topic that is not listed here. We also have a solution for that. We have an independent study uh, program. So if you're interested in a specific topic under a supervision of a professor, you can take this research course with this professor and then write a research paper throughout the one semester and it is graded as one common elective course. And admission criteria. We have Two different, uh, actually, most similar uh, similar admission criteria for both 
programs, but we have one specific thing for which is this program for Turkish students. So all our applicants are required to submit a foreign language exam score, which is TOEFL for international students, TOEFL, YDS, Yokdil YDS, and Yokdil are the ones for Turkish students. We are, that these are language uh, exams in Turkey. Uh, unfortunately, IELTS is not accepted in Turkey, so we do not have that in our list. Um, and also for Turkish students applying for with thesis program, they are required to submit an academic postgraduate education exam score, which is which takes in Turkey and it is in Turkish, so which is uh, under the regulation of Turkish Higher Education Council. So you need to have 55 or above. That's only for Turkish applicants. Uh, this is the minimum uh, graduation score from LLB uh, grades. So we have this grading system in Turkey for GPA and you need to have 2.75 GPA out of four. I understand like different countries have different grading system, but we evaluate your transcripts accordingly. And if it equals to 2.75, then you are, uh, you are accepted to, uh, you pass this admission criteria and you need to submit your transcript and LLB diploma in our system. For non thesis students though, you are not, Turkish students are not required to submit LS score, but the other rest of the criteria is the same. How and when to apply. Application deadline, as you might have seen on our website, is the June 20th. This is a quick link to our grad app application system where you can submit all your documents and grades. And then we evaluate, it's a shortlisted uh, area. So you make sure that you submit because some of the uh, applicants are, they think that they, they, they've done the old procedure, but they don't uh, press the submit button. Make sure that you do it by the end of, by the end of deadline. So 20th of June, uh, you, you should have submitted your application. So what happens after you submit your application? There is this two, two, we have two committees for public law and private law, and then uh, they shortlist the candidates according to criteria. Uh, we will get to that criteria, but maybe Q&A session, you, you can ask that, what if I don't have TOEFL? What if I don't have ALES at the moment? What happens now? So uh, due to COVID-19 measures, most of the exams are scheduled or po postponed later. So that's why considering this in mind, we, we accept the applications without those exam scores uh, conditionally, but, uh, but we evaluate the applications upon their graduation score then we will invite them to an online interview and written exam on 7th of July. That will be online. Uh, and if, if your candidates pass these exams successfully, they will receive a conditional offer under, that means that they need to submit their ALES or TOEFL YDS scores uh, as soon as the, the day these exams takes place. So, after the 7th of July, uh, like after we have these interviews and written exams, uh, offers uh, will be made within two, three weeks in the follow for, uh, for the, ex uh, the candidates so they can have their uh, status of their application. The tuition fee. So you might have seen as well on our website that the tuition for the program, this is the program fee, it is not annual, this is the program fee, 76,500 Turkish liras, which equals to around 11,000 US dollars at today's exchange rates. So uh, we also offer some merit-based scholarship uh, for our LLM students. It could be a tuition fee waiver, 25%, 50%, or full waiver. These waivers assessed based on the successful performance of the candidate on the written exam and interview. And then we, the committee submit this evaluation to graduate school of social sciences and you receive your admission letters and decision, final decision approved by the university. Uh, as Melissa was mentioning that we, we also offer global exchange and Erasmus plus exchange programs. That means that uh, you, you're, I'm sure you're familiar with this, but like as an undergraduate student, graduate students also benefit from these global exchange and Erasmus plus exchange programs. So as long as our LLM students complete their curriculum, they complete, they successfully complete their courses, they can benefit from this global exchange and spend one semester or two semester at a, another, another university, one of our partner institutions globally or in Europe. And they 
benefit that exchange semester to write their um, research, to write their thesis or short-term uh, final projects. So these are the countries that we have our partners. We have partners over 300 uh, reputation and reputable institutions over 60 countries. So you can uh, benefit from this and apply to, this is an application through our international office programs office and they evaluate it and they can benefit from this that exchange program in one of the countries that you pick. Uh, I would like to give you some uh, experience like these are some testimonials from our LLM alumni. Uh, Cenk from United States, Irina from Romania, and Simon Onanj is from Turkey. So it is always great to hear from alumni to share their experience at Coach University, how, sorry, how they benefited from this program and how studying at LLM at Coach University boosts their careers. For example, Cenk Lawrence is now back to the States. She, he is working for an NGO in Washington, DC. Irina uh, uh, just decided to stay at Koch University, she's following her PhD. Hussamitin Önanj is, um, has completed his uh, PhD LLM program after 35 years of uh, professional career. Now, I think he's also following his PhD at the moment. And where are our graduate students from? So Professor Odosa mentioned that we have students from all around the world. These are our current, current graduate students where they are coming from. So if we have students from the United States, Brazil, Africa, Russia, uh, Europe, and Middle East. As you can see, the red mark countries are the current students that we have in our low graduate programs. So uh, before I end my presentation, I would like to give you the contact details that we have. This is a study at ku.edu.tr is Melista's office that they help all our international candidates with any questions. You can always contact me. This is my email address. Also, you can find on our website that any, any questions you have, you can just write to me an email. Uh, and these are our social media accounts that you can see how Coach University looks like and they share uh, daily updates and notifications about our university. And next to you, Melissa, be good to go for Thank questions. You. Thank you very much, Estra, uh, for the overview of the program. So um, thank you for staying with us. I hope that was a good kind of you know, intro to, to our university and to the LLM program. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. So we're now gonna start going um, through those questions. What I will do is I'm going to open the Q&A uh, view for us. And then I will be asking either Professor Bertil or Estra or even perhaps uh, our team from the Graduate School of Social Sciences to answer those questions. Some of them I will be able to answer for those of you who are asking questions related to international applicants. Um, so the first one was, when a funding do you have for international students? So I think as uh, Estra was saying, so we provide tuition waiver scholarships based on academic merit. And these are for both Turkish and national students. So there's no distinction in that sense. So everyone has the same opportunity uh, to be considered for a merit based tuition waiver based on you know, academic merit. So in that sense, I hope that answers your questions. And as maybe we can go back to that slide, um, Esther, of the tuition and the scholarships. Okay, so yeah, so the type of funding uh, aid or financial aid that we can provide for these programs is yeah, uh, of 25%, 50%, and in some cases, full tuition waiver for, I guess, outstanding candidates. Maybe Bertil, Professor Bertil can tell us roughly who is an outstanding candidate, uh, if that helps, because I, I, there's another question later on about whether full scholarships are available for the thesis or, and even the non-thesis LLM program. The eligible candidates for full scholarships uh, are very uh, high caliber students, actually. Uh, we consider the GPA, of course, however, however, the GPA is not the only criteria. 
in that we make our decision. We also take into account uh, the written examination that is uh, heavily based on an argumentative uh, essay in the field of public law on the basis of a specific case law uh, from, uh, from a jurisdiction, from a specific jurisdiction, or we take into account the decisions of the quasi-judicial bodies of the UN uh, committees or a case law uh, from Inter-American Commission of Human Rights or European Court of Human Rights, um, etc. As regards uh, private law, uh, there are uh, also uh, pre-articulated case scenarios that the candidates should uh, solve and provide their argumentation. And in other words, uh, the knowledge and uh, argumentation-based approaches are blended in our uh, questions in the written examinations and you take account uh, the oral uh, skills of the relevant uh, candidates uh, and we are quite happy that we uh, recruit a, a high number of uh, scholarship students uh, each year. The number of scholarships are not predefined actually since we follow a merit-based approach for the scholarships. Great. Thank you very much. That, that's really good insight in terms of um, what to expect if you're shortlisted of the interview and the exam, um, which I, I think there will probably be a question about that or there might be if it's not there already. Um, again, a question related to the tuition fees. Uh, so it's saying not annual for one semester. No, so this is the tuition fee for the whole program, which is to be completed in two semesters. Correct, Esra? Yeah, this is a for for whole program. So with thesis programs, it is two years. Two so years. Th yeah, and if it is non non thesis program students, he will pay for this for one year, the whole program. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question: How does coronavirus affect your class schedules and visa arrangements for international students? So I'll I'll rephrase that. I guess you're referring to how is it going to affect the fall 2020 class schedules and visa arrangements for international students. And there is a follow-up question um, in terms of, for example, a successful application in June or July would make it very unlikely for international students to obtain a visa in time for classes in September. What do we do in this case? That's a very relevant question. Um, there's a number of uncertain things at the moment in which we as a university, of course, depend on what the Turkish government is going to be uh, stipulating for all universities, not only ours, in terms of how and when we will be able to, uh, let's say, open campus and in what way or shape or form, whether, for example, all of our courses will need to be delivered online or a combination of online and residential face-to-face uh, -face delivery of courses. All of that, um, in terms of class schedules, it's unknown at this point. What I can tell you is that the university, our university has been quite proactive since all of this started earlier this year in terms of setting up a task force and you know, ensuring the, the safety and the health of all of our you know, community or faculty, students, staff. And now they have a task force to start thinking about yeah, the next steps that we have to take um, before September and during that first semester. So that part about class schedules, it is unknown. With regards to visa arrangements, what I, I can say is that in comparison to other graduate uh, destinations such as the US or UK or even Germany, what Turkey offers, it's a bit of flexibility for international students in the sense that if you are, if you have a passport or citizenship is from a country um, that you can enter Turkey with a tourist visa or an e-visa, which is quite easy to obtain, then that's the type of visa that you enter uh, with in September as a new student. Once you're here, then uh, our Office of International Programs, we have a specific unit, which is the International Community Office, ICO. And we can also, I will type the address on the chat box before we go. Um, they then support all of our international undergraduate and graduate students to apply for a student residence permit. That's the residence permit that will allow you to stay in Turkey as a student for the two semesters or four semesters of your LLM program if you're doing non-thesis or thesis. So for example, if you are coming from um, India, you can actually enter 
as with a tourist visa as you would now if you were thinking of coming just to Turkey for tourism purposes. And once you're here, then that office is going to help you to apply for your student residence permit. So in that sense, it's an easier process in terms of the time scales that you need to, to have your offer um, to, to make decisions, let's say. Of course, that doesn't apply to every country. For some countries, you do need to enter with a, um, a student visa. And even if you can enter with a tourist visa, it, it goes through the Turkish embassy or consulate in your country, and it may take time. So again, all of these are um, for, for those situations. Um, and I don't know if Professor Bertil, Bertil wants to also uh, jump in here, but uh, we are starting to offer also some of our, I mean, right now we're offering all of our courses online to our current students. So we have completely switched our delivery to online because of coronavirus restrictions. So it may be that in September, we start those courses again in an online format. This is an uncertain kind of thing at the moment, is what I can say. So may I make a very quick contribution? Okay. Yeah. Uh, in terms of online uh, remote education, we were quite lucky because we had the technological infrastructure at Koch University. Of course, it was just an abrupt migration uh, to the technological uh, platforms. However, we did not have any difficulties. For example, I also teach undergraduate uh, students constitutional law, Turkish constitutional law, and I have approximately 200 students in my class uh, right now. And I have organized all my uh, sessions uh, via Zoom and MS Teams uh, platforms. And they, they were live sessions, and I have also recorded all those sessions. We have organized these different types of discussion boards uh, in collaboration uh, with our Center on Teaching and Learning at Koch University. We have a, a devoted Center on Teaching and Learning. It offers different opportunities uh, for both in instructors and, and the students. And we also conduct our exams on online uh, platforms by taking the advantage uh, of different types of uh, algorithms, actually. The, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, just a very uh, uh, fruitful and very useful tool, particularly in the field of social science and humanities. And we have also uh, strengthened our uh, similar uh, platforms against uh, abuses and integrity uh, issues. We are very qualified in terms of uh, technological uh, teaching since we have applied uh, similar sessions previously within the framework of our LLM programs and even for our undergraduate uh, uh, students. Uh, when you take into account uh, the fact that we have developed our programs on the basis of intensive modules, it has also uh, worked uh, in favor of our students. Some of our international students left Turkey because of the pandemic. However, most of them stayed in uh, Turkey, actually. For example, our German uh, students, we have offered our classes Zoom via Teams and use our uh, online uh, platform, technological platform, Blackboard for different types of uh, interactions because uh, we, is, we take uh, the student engagement ser seriously at Koch University in uh, general and we didn't have any uh, problems in terms of international students or domestic students as regards our transformation, our technological transformation in the meantime. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Bertil. Um, there's a question here from a Nigerian um, student uh, regarding the English requirement. Uh, you know, because uh, he says that he has completed all of his education in English. Um, the, why do I still have to provide to prove my English proficiency? There are some rules, again, in which we are tied to the national regulations from the Higher Education Council of Turkey, which is a regulatory body for all universities. And they set the rules on um, some fixed, let's say, mandatory criteria for all uh, thesis programs, especially like research uh, programs, masters and, and PhD. So one of them is that if the program is uh, taught in English, then the candidates need to show English proficiency. Um, they do have a, a list of 
countries that they consider to be native English speaking countries and uh, students from those countries can be exempted from providing a, a TOEFL or other type of English proficiency score. Um, Nigeria is not in that list at the moment. So this is why you would need to provide an, uh, an English proficiency exam, okay? Um, there is a question here. If I'm not, if I didn't get it wrong, for evaluation of applications and LM programs this year, the interviews and exams will be held via Zoom because of coronavirus. Ezra, if you want, unmute your microphone and Yes, uh, we are going to have our first interviews on 7th of July, and then we will set uh, our written exams at a different date for our students, uh, and then we make a decision. But previously, we used to have online interviews and written exam for international students and have our uh, Turkish applicants in Tur on our campus. But this year, due to coronavirus measures, our campus is closed, and we're going to have all uh, evaluation process online. Okay, so if you're in Turkey, this was a question from a Turkish yeah. Um, uh, participant. So yeah, you will also do it via online. Mm -hmm. online. Um, could you give the percentage equivalent of the CGPA requirement? I guess you're referring if you're, for example, if you're if your degree was evaluated on a scale of uh, 100. So what is 2.75 equivalent to, equivalent to on like a one a hundred percent? Uh, scale, I guess that's the question. I don't know if maybe someone from our graduate school of social sciences might have the answer. I know that there's some rules for that and I'm not familiar with them, so I, I don't want to say something. Uh, with you. Maybe I can try to answer that. Every country has a different conversion uh, as to GPA calculations, so uh, can we maybe have the candidate email us and we can see the conversions and see their transcripts to be able to better interpret the actual equivalency of the GPA. Okay. And there was okay. another question on the chat uh, of somebody asking, if I don't have 2.75, if I have 2.63, is it like zero chance of admission? That's a question, I guess. Yeah. Professor unfortunately, Ezra. unfortunately, yeah, because these uh, scores are set by our uh, higher education, our university academic council, and these are the, the minimum criteria. So we cannot accept applications below 2.75. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, let me just check. So a candidate that doesn't qualify for any funding or tuition waiver. What other modes of payments are available to such a candidate? Is it possible to make payments in installments? Like, can the tuition be? Um, so, I guess you know, like you, the first there's two installments, one for each semester. Um, within each semester, oh, I know that we have installment uh, options for the tuition payment of our undergraduate programs. Um, if you, for example, are able to. Uh, open a, a bank account in Turkey, which you can do once you're here if you're an international student, then it kind of uh, the, the it breaks down the payment into four the installments. But maybe perhaps the first semester is going to have to be paid in in full if you haven't opened a bank account yet because they cannot take installments from banks abroad in the same way. So I hope that answers your your questions. If there's any other Comments from our graduate school or no? Okay. I mean, alternative arrangements can be made depending on the condition of the student, but that would have to go through the executive council of our uh, graduate school. So that depends on the, the, the case and the, the circumstances of the students. But uh, usually we do collect the tuition in two installments. Mm -hmm. They can, as you said, they can apply to the banks and banks are able to provide monthly based even installments in some cases, I believe. So uh, there, there's some payment options there and special conditions may apply, like I said, with the approval of the executive council. Okay. Um, now we have a question. We have two questions which are essentially very similar, which is uh, information regarding the written exam in terms of which subjects, lectures will be asking the exams and the interviews. Professor Bertil started to talk about this uh, previously, but uh, do we want to add anything, anything else? Uh, I, guess it, I guess the topics vary, right? I mean. Yeah, 
probably uh, it would be advisable that you check our uh, website. So we will be uh, adding some topics regarding the exams. However, uh, in the field of public law, uh, you will be providing an uh, argumentative essay on the basis of uh, a pre-articulated case scenario or a case law analysis. Uh, for the international uh, student, we prefer the case law uh, analysis uh, because it is not an exam that uh, tries to understand your basic knowledge as regards to legal studies. We just try to understand your argumentative skills. That is the reason we share you, uh, we share with you the text, uh, the case uh, law uh, from a specific jurisdiction, uh, a case law from quasi judicial bodies of the UN committees, or a case law from the European Court of Justice that is easily uh, accessible for all candidates from all different uh, jurisdictions. That is the reason you will be having the guidelines, such as the word limit, uh, such as the structure of the uh, essay. Uh, such as the points that you have to discuss in your es essay and uh, you will be having uh, the guidelines actually and the structure uh, so that you can uh, easily provide uh, actually an argumentative essay if you are an eligible candidate on the basis of a specific uh, case or for the private law candidates we have predefined uh, areas uh, announced by our uh, committees, uh, particularly the law obligations and the private international law are the hot topics of uh, private law uh, committees. And in the field of public law, we have a very strong focus on human rights and constitutional law uh, with a flavor of uh, criminal law. However, it is just a rights-based essay in the field of public law. And in, in the field of private law, we have a very strong focus on the law of obligations and private international law issues. Thank you very much. I hope that was um, useful for all of you interested in knowing more about the uh, written exam structure and the, the guidelines that you would receive before, of course. Um, there's a question, are we supposed to do the foreign language exam before application for admission? So the answer is yes. Under normal circumstances, yes. Um, however, this year, because we know that there's no test dates or test centers available in many countries, including Turkey, then um, you can apply without the uh, English proficiency exam. And if you are successful in the interview and the written exam, you will be offered a conditional admission so that by the time you come, you know, or start the semester, then by then we are expecting that some of, of these test situations will normalize or will be more available in several countries so that you can take the exam. Another question here, please elaborate on career prospects for international students, um, especially Indians. I guess the question, I will interpret it as career prospects um, in Turkey and outside of Turkey. I hope my internet is okay, that you can hear me. Can you hear me? Melissa, could you repeat? Could yeah, you I'll, I'll repeat that. So a question which is, can you talk a little bit, you know, elaborate on career prospects for international students, especially uh, Indian students? So after graduation, what are the type of career opportunities that they could have in Turkey, if it's possible, or outside of Turkey? Uh, in Turkey, you may serve, of course, as legal uh, consultants. However, uh, as regards practicing law, uh, there are different types of national regulatory frameworks uh, provided either by the bar associations or provided uh, by Ministry of uh, justice or uh, th there is a statutory legislation that regulates usually the legal uh, profession. In so uh, a registered lawyer uh, in Turkey, you have to uh, provide a, a graduation a certificate from a Turkish university and it is, uh, it is really difficult, uh, not only for international students, however, uh, also uh, for for uh, Turkish citizens who had uh, 
a degree uh, from an international uh, university. However, it is not impossible, uh, of course. That is the reason most of uh, the international uh, law firms uh, in Turkey are located in international uh, law firms. Uh, there is uh, a variety of uh, law firms uh, in Turkey uh, uh, who collaborate with international uh, partners. However, most of our graduates uh, are interested in pursuing international uh, careers in international organizations, particularly UN uh, offices uh, in Turkey uh, as regards refugees, as regards uh, human rights uh, engagement. Uh, U UN Women had also, has also a quarter in Istanbul, uh, the main uh, quarter for, uh, for Europe and uh, Asia. Uh, and they are in uh, international careers uh, uh, in the Council of Europe uh, and uh, in the EU uh, Commission. Uh, we do not have, unfortunately, any um, students uh, from, from India. Uh, however, I'm quite uh, sure that it will be a marvelous experience uh, for students from uh, India to take the opportunity uh, to deal uh, with the complex questions of civil law uh, jurisdiction and common law uh, jurisdiction. It may be quite uh, interesting uh, uh, for, for, for scholars, for students uh, from India uh, to spend at least two semesters uh, in Turkey to discuss uh, international and comparative law uh, topics. Uh, if you uh, pursue a career at Koç uh, University as an LLM student, uh, it may be a very uh, good opportunity for you that you will be having an access to uh, different European uh, jurisdictions because in Turkey we have mainly the civil law jurisdictions in the field of uh, private law. However, in the field of public law, it is, it is rather uh, complex. Uh, in general, it has a very European uh, structure and it, it is advisable uh, to Indian uh, students that you uh, have an access to civil law jurisdiction and, and a and a complex and a hybrid public law uh, jurisdiction and gain experience so you may feel yourself uh, more uh, developed uh, in terms of legal uh, understanding. Thank you. One thing I want to add because um, our team, we regularly meet with Turkish, um, you know, embassies and consulates. And in India, I do remember during our last visit, the, the, the the embassy was very keen because they said that the, the flow of trade between India and Turkey is growing. There's still an imbalance, but most of it is actually Indian companies exporting towards uh, Turkey. So there is a growing field of business, uh, you know, from India towards Turkey. And uh, again, this, this is an opportunity for you as a, as a lawyer to set yourself apart from the pack in the sense that you will have a very different profile uh, by having had experience of living in Istanbul and in Turkey. And as Professor Bertil was saying, uh, gaining that kind of European approach to juris, juris, you know, jurisdiction law. Um, if I, got it, I, I think I got that wrong, so I'll, I'll, I'll repeat that back. But um, yeah, so it, it's something that we have seen in other LLM students that, you know, by being here, they really make themselves unique and they find sometimes like niche opportunities because of, of having lived in Turkey, which is, um, you know, it's, it's not as everyone does, which is go to the US or maybe UK, maybe Germany. So it's, it is a differentiating, differentiating factor with, um, with employers and, and people who want to do uh, business related to Turkey. Uh, we have a question here. I'm working in Saudi Arabia as a legal counsel. So is there any option to do partially, like remotely partially on campus? Would it be possible? So uh, coming, uh, I guess, uh, yeah. coming, coming and going and taking some courses online. Uh, sure. So we had like normally our program is full time. So we expect our students to 
physically at, on campus and attend their co courses because it's a modular basis. So the class, they are, they're supposed to be on campus on Fridays and Saturdays and we expect them to be on campus. Unfortunately, we do not have remote or distance learning program. But if like during this, this period, COVID-19 period, we have all our lectures online, but that doesn't mean that this is a distinct distance learning program. So we expect our students to be full time. We had students based in different countries and they traveled back and forth uh, from Azerbaijan and from uh, Qatar, for example. Every uh, every weekend, I, I knew that they, they attended classes. They moved. It is, of course, very expensive regarding trips and stuff, but they it was their choice and they came and attended all lectures. So we expect our students to be on campus for lectures. I think, so yeah, I mean, I guess because, you know, there's, there's several flights and direct flights between Saudi Arabia and, and, and Turkey, you know, in terms in practical terms, it is possible. I guess you have to organize yourself very well to, to cope with your, you know, your work at the same time and the course, uh, the course workload that you will have as part of the, of the programs. But yeah, we do. Oh, sorry. There's, I'm, we're all working from home. Now I have motorcycles passing by. I've had noisy neighbors in the past of today's <laughs> motorcycles. Okay. We have a question here. How many PhD positions are available for Koch LLM students on average? So people who have completed the LLM with thesis and then want to continue to a PhD program. Uh, if we can give information about that. Is there, is there a fixed number of, or average number of positions or not? No, we do not have any reserved seats uh, for, for LLM students if they would like to pursue their PhD uh, career at Koch University. Mm -hmm. Again, there will be committees uh, and they have to apply to the professors with a research proposal, including the research methodology, uh, the, the literature uh, review uh, dealing with the state of the art, and uh, the, the uh, possible research uh, outcomes uh, and their targets and so on. If this research uh, proposal is accepted by a professor, uh, she or he, the, po the possible candidate may uh, proceed to the second uh, stage, uh, then, we, then we will be again having uh, an examination committee, uh, an interview, and we will be making our uh, decision. We have uh, very uh, limited uh, seats for uh, possible PhD students. We are quite selective in terms of uh, PhD. Uh, however, we are, we are quite uh, happy that we have recruited high caliber PhD uh, students. Our PhD uh, program is a full scholarship uh, program. Uh, that is the reason we are quite selective and we try to support our students with different uh, funds by providing different types of support uh, opportunities. And this is again an uh, international program. We have uh, right now uh, 20 uh, students, including the international um, uh, students. Uh, if you are interested in uh, pursuing uh, a PhD uh, degree at uh, Koch University, please check again our uh, website uh, on uh, PhD in public law and uh, PhD in uh, private law. We have a very uh, strong uh, focus on theoretical issues of public and uh, private law and please uh, try to uh, provide a meaningful research proposal including a strong research design if you'd like to pursue a PhD degree at Koch uh, University. And you have to also approach to our uh, professors. Uh, the research expertise, the fields of interest of the professors can be found uh, at uh, their own web pages. Uh, and if uh, the relevant professor accepts uh, you, we can proceed to the second uh, stage. And please follow our announcement as regards our uh, PhD uh, programs mm -hmm. uh, in future. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have a question. Do you, do you need to have a prior law degree to apply for the LLM and PhD? Or are applicants from all educational backgrounds welcome to apply? I think the answer is they do need to have a law degree. Yes, yes, yeah. then you need to have a, a law degree, an LB degree, both for LLM and for PhD. Okay, so if you're coming from a different background, then this, not, this is not a good fit for you in terms of, of 
the program basically um, uh, that's what we want to say okay then um, if okay maybe this is a question for a graduate school of social sciences if the COVID situation in turkey or where we are currently located prevents us from starting in september is there an opportunity to defer acceptance for a year so to start in september 2021 um with the approval of the department of course sure um in in such cases we usually consult the department if they're okay and if they're still uh, willing to admit the, the candidate and if their uh, answer is yes sure yes uh, so we also have uh, applications for spring semesters as well. So it is that students, that they don't need to start in September. So they can also start in January for our second semester as well. So if they cannot have their visa, student visas, they cannot travel in September, they can defer it to next semester or the other year as well. So they can keep their admission offer uh, and then start whenever they, are, they, they can travel to Turkey. Okay, thank you. Um, a question from one of our Turkish participants. Is there a chart or table where we can see the professors or instructors who are attending or I guess giving the LLM lectures uh, during, this, during each semester? Um, Ezra, you need to on. Yeah. So actually, we uh, you, they can see all our uh, professors on uh, academic uh, list of our uh, law school, but uh, also on our brochure we have the professors, also uh, the courses. But if they have any questions, also visiting professors are also on our website for academic list, uh, professors list, so you can see all international uh, visiting professors and also full time professors. But if they have any specific area and they would like to see which professors is delivering that course they can also email me if they have if they cannot find it okay all right so so uh i think that was gokan hello gokan so i think if you email Ezra specifically about which uh, courses you're interested in to know who is teaching them then um, we can do that like we can communicate further via via email um so okay so if i'm given conditional admission when will i need to submit the english proficiency test Maybe our graduate school can answer that. So uh, under these circumstances, the students will have the first semester to submit their missing information, such as alias GRE or English uh, exams. So within the first semester, students will uh, be expected to, uh, to present their uh, conditional offers, scores. There is a question here uh, of someone who is doing an LLB, so their undergraduate degree in law, and an MBA. Will my MBA degree will give me an advantage for admission in the LLM if the GPA is lower in the LLB? Because it says my MBA GPA is higher than my LLB uh, degree. Uh, again, the criteria is for the uh, undergraduate degree, so they need to have the 2.75 or equivalent to 2.75 GPA for the LLB degrees, not any other masters or other uh, other programs. And there is a question about accommodation facilities. How affordable is it? Are there options to pick up a part-time job to supplement tuition fees and other incidental costs? So I'll answer the first part of this. Um, we we offer graduate accommodation for our thesis students on a limited basis and based on availability. Um, not, not everyone can, um, be, we cannot find places for everybody. We try our best. However, if you want to know prices, those are on our website. So I will, you know, you can also email us and we will send you a specific link where you can see the, the, the rates. In general for Istanbul, uh, we also recommend to international students to check uh, website such as Nombeo, we I'll, I'll type that in the chat before we go, because it can give you an idea of uh, living costs overall for Istanbul based on your lifestyle choices. So, uh, you know, it can range from 400 to 600 dollars a month, depending on how often you eat out, if you're going to use a car or not, uh, which part of the city you want to be living in. So that's that's the kind of to give you a range of living costs here in Istanbul um, at the moment. 
Um, and is, are there options to pick up a part-time job? We've had students at the LLM who have done that uh, in terms of uh, internships. Is that correct, Ezra? Yes, they also work as a consultant at international law firms during their LLM uh, studies. So we have, or also they do internship, paid internships in you know, UN offices or international law firms. So we have many students, uh, you know, receiving income during their LLM studies. Thank you, Esther. Um, now I have street musicians just outside my window because we are in the middle of the month of Ramadan in Turkey, of course. Um, so now I have a concert next to me. So Ezra, can I kindly ask you to read the next few questions and I'll mute myself. I, I have them literally now banging drums and- Okay, okay. I hope it gives Go you ahead. a of Turkish culture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Melissa. So we have uh, a prof uh, DH Stack House. We have this question about the recommendation letters, but we do not ask for recommendation letters, neither for LLM uh, programs nor for PhDs. So you don't have to submit any recommendation letters. So another. So when is the deadline for submitting required documents such as diploma? That's the deadline. Uh, so if you are if you graduated and if you can prove that with your transcript or a letter from your university, but you don't have to have your diploma because we know that issuing diplomas take time. So uh, as long as you have an official letter from your university that you graduated, you can uh, submit it in our system and you can register uh, in the program if you get admitted. So another question. I think the musicians have gone now, but yeah. <laughs> There's also a question about the health law. Uh, we do not have a specific course on the law, uh, health law, uh, but if you, again, I'm telling you, if you are interested in a, this kind of specific areas and you can do an independent study with a professor in any field, in a, in a, in a niche fields like that. So, uh, but under LLM curriculum, we don't have a specific course on health law. So, um, can you see another? Yeah, so uh, there was a question about recommendation letters, but for PhD. Uh, no, not even PhDs, we do not ask for okay. recommendation. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, let's say, okay, so do you have other African students in the LLM program? Yes, we have a student from Kenya at the moment currently. She's back to Kenya now. She's in the thesis writing process. Uh, if, if they want to keep in touch and then have their perspective, we will be happy to put them in contact. Okay. And um, we also have a PhD student from South Africa. Okay. Um, is it possible for someone to be enrolled into direct PhD program after LLB program? Uh, we, like, there are joint programs in Turkey, both like after LLB direct uh, PhD programs, but we do not uh, apply that. We also we ask our candidates to first do our LLM student program and then uh, do a PhD. So practically we apply this. We just ask our students to have first their LLM and then PhD. There is a question here. Um, what are the benefits and advantages for students from the Balkan Peninsula and your university? Um, one thing that comes to mind is that similar to Ezra's previous answer, because you are geographically very close to Turkey, if you wish to kind of continue working in your country of current residence and come during the weekends to take the courses of the LLM, in you know it would be practically possible to do that. So from a geographical location, that's an, ad an advantage that not other students have, for example, if they're in Southeast Asia or, you know, in, in countries in Africa. So that's one advantage. But other than that, I don't think <laughs> there's others. I mean, culturally, there's also some similar kind of things that we share with, uh, as Turkey, with different countries around um, the Balkans. So I know there's some similarities in food, but other than that, that's, that's what we can say, I guess. Um, uh, okay. 
So just to clarify again about English proficiency, if I have to, if I have until the end of the first semester to provide proof of English, um, as the graduate school said, does it does this mean I can take the TOEFL exam in Turkey after I resume? Yes. Yeah. Do you want me to answer that or yeah. is that? Yes, uh, yes, yes. You can take the TOEFL here in, in Turkey when you arrive. Um, within your conditional acceptance, it stated that you will have the first semester to, uh, to present the missing score. So wherever you're able to take that exam, uh, it will be accepted. Okay. Uh, there is someone who would like to see again this slide where we're showing the core and elective courses. So if Esra can go back in the presentation to that, um, like the curriculum for uh, the private law and the public law programs. Yeah, so I hope everyone can see that. Um, again, that information is also on the program website where you can see the description of each of the courses, of each of these courses and um, the list of the, the electives. Uh, here, let's see. Let's, I'm just checking the chat um, box to see if we have any other additional questions and we have run a bit out of time now. Uh, yeah, so, okay, so there was a question from a Turkish participant. According to my university the GPA convers con conversion scale, my graduation, my GPA in 100 is equivalent to 2.45. However, as, a, as per the con con conversion scale of Yoke, my GPA is equivalent to three. So can I fulfill the required GPA? Which GPA will be considered? I think that's uh, the official that like the official GPA on Diploma will be considered. Uh, I received uh, Frat Bay your email as well. I can also respond to your email, but like the we we need to evaluate whatever is written on the diploma. But if there is other that if they have an official statement from York regarding the regarding proving that this diploma is equivalent to 2.75, of course, we can take this into account. But as far as I know, such uh, equivalency, like if it, if he graduated from Turkish institution at university, which the greatest the GPA is what it is written on diploma. So we'll script and we'll see. Uh, okay. And what I don't understand what your equivalence is because all institutions are applying the same. So we will we will have a look, but it has to be two point seventy five. Okay. Um, the tuition fees paid after a scholarship decision of before. Um, I guess you're referring if there's some type of tuition deposit. We don't have that. So you know, if you're offered admission to the program, your offer letter will already give information and state if you have been awarded a full or partial tuition waiver or not. If it's not, then you're expected to pay your first semester tuition once you come to enroll at the university, if it's September, September, or you know, whenever it is. Um, there's a question here. Uh, sorry. I think we have answered most of the questions here. I'm just trying to check we're not missing anything. There was a question about internship and career opportunities in human rights, which I think Professor Bertil actually explained quite well uh, with examples of our current and previous LLM students who are now in offices such as UNDP and other um, international bodies with headquarters or regional uh, headquarters here in, in Turkey. Okay, so um, I think with that, we're going to close today's uh, Q&A part of the webinar. Um, Please, uh, Ezra, can we go to the slides with the contact details again, please? Okay, so I hope it has been a, a fruitful and enjoyable activity for you to join our webinar. We will be organizing others um, with some different, uh, we're discussing ideas right now in the next uh, couple of weeks. So keep an eye on our website and our social media channels because we will be announcing those upcoming webinars, again, about the LLM program and our School of Law on, the, on social media and also on the website. So with that, I would like to say goodbye. Thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, I know you have very different uh, 
time zones right now that we have here in our participants. So for those of you who stayed up late to be with us, thank you again. For those of you in Turkey, thank you so much. Uh, we wish we could host you on campus and answer all your questions face to face, but you know that we'll, we'll have to make the most of what we have available at our at our hands right now. If Professor Bertil and Ezra and Tuche would like to also say goodbye, then I will then finish the webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we hope we do hope to see you at Coach University. Thank you so much. Thank you on behalf of the graduate school as well. Thank you. So we will end the recording now. Bye.